We have some genuinely outstanding artifact finds to show you in this video. They come from all over the world, and they arrive in many different shapes and sizes. Some are just a few centuries old, while others were created thousands of years ago. The one thing they have in common is that every single one of them represents an incredible discovery. Let's get started. Let's start with a very recent discovery. In June 2016, this humble-looking lead sheet was found at the archaeological site of Pico de los Ajos in Valencia, Spain. What makes it special is that it's inscribed with an ancient form of the Iberian written language. Not only that, but archaeologists believe it to be even older than the site it was found within. While inscribed lead sheets like this have been found before, only a handful have been found via legal excavations. The site is very old. It was a fortified early Iberian town that was founded some 2200 years ago and lasted until the end of the Roman Imperial era. Unfortunately, we don't yet know enough about the Iberian language to translate the message scrawled across both sides of the fragile artifact. However, we know enough about the style of the characters to say it was written around 2400 years ago. The presence of a written document at a site that was founded 200 years later might imply that it was buried as a votive offering beneath an important building, perhaps a temple or a barracks. During the 1950s, a team of archaeologists discovered a spindle whorl while excavating a site at Zermno, Poland. At the time, they somehow missed the fact that the multiple lines on its surface were actually a Cyrillic inscription. That information only came to light when the artifact was re-inspected during a research project in 2018. The inscription has helped to date the spindle world to the late 12th century, making it the only early medieval world ever found in the whole country. Objects like this add weight to spindles, stopping the thread from sliding off and providing momentum for spinning. They're usually made of clay, but this one is made of arek slate. Despite being found in Poland, the inscription makes it almost sure to be a Russian import. The clearest word written on its surface is Houghton, which can be translated as either lover or master. That means it might have been a gift, probably from husband to wife. Given the fact that it was found outside rather than within the ruins of any specific building, it's likely that the world was lost and then became buried over time. What a careless way to treat a gift. Here's another discovery with Russian origins. It's a set of fishing traps and seines that were found close to an established archaeological site close to Moscow in 2012. According to the team responsible for the discovery, the objects are close to 7,500 years old. That means if you're into fishing, you're taking part in a hobby that's almost as old as human civilization itself. Experts have been surprised by the complexity of the artifacts which are among the oldest examples of fishing equipment ever to be found in Europe. Prior to the find, historians thought that the Mesolithic occupants of the region had seasonal rather than permanent settlements. But the nature of the fishing gear implies that they stuck around in the same place for longer than we once thought. Fishing must have played an essential role in their daily lives and even in their primitive economies. Fish is easy to dry, smoke, and preserve, so they can be kept either for later consumption or to be sold to other tribes or individuals. This was such an advanced operation that the fishermen even had knives made from moose ribs for cleaning and scaling the fish they caught. Returning to the theme of recent discoveries, in June 2021, archaeologists from the Hebrew University of Jerusalem found an ancient clay seal impression in the remains of Tel Tzav, an almost prehistoric village in Israel's Beit Shean Valley. The impression contains two visibly different geometric stamps and was made around 7,000 years ago. It's thought the seal was used to designate properties that were protected for commercial reasons. It's thought that this particular seal is among the first ever to be used to identify commercial barns or silos. The seal would break if the door to the property was opened, thereby letting its owner know that someone had been inside without authorization. This isn't drastically different to the way that modern sealings are used for the same purpose today. 
Seals bearing the name and sometimes also the occupation of their owners became common in Jerusalem during the first temple period of around 2,600 years ago. But this tiny example comes from a time before the invention of writing. The type of clay used in the seal comes from more than 10 miles away, which implies that the residents of Taltsov traded with other villages across relatively long distances for the era. We're going to stay in Israel for a moment to check out another discovery that was made at the country's Ein Zippori site in 2012. This time, the discoveries come from the Stone Age. We have a stone plaque with etchings of what appear to be two ostriches running together and a well-made stone bowl containing many fine stone beads. In both cases, the artifacts are believed to be around 10,000 years old. That places them at the beginning of the country's Chalcolithic period and probably identifies them as relics of the Wadi Rabah culture. Ein Zippori is thought to have been the culture's most important site. The remains of their buildings can also be found here, with floors made from small stones and crushed chalk surrounded by mud brick walls. Flint tools, including sickles, have been found in the same area, suggesting that the Wadi Rabah may have had an agricultural economy. That idea is supported by the discovery of figurines of cattle, pigs, and sheep made of clay, seemingly underlining the importance of animals to the people who made the figurines. The purposes of the stone plaque and the bowl are uncertain, but they may simply have been decorative household items. In June 2016, Israeli lifeguard Mir Amsik went out for his regular morning run on the Mediterranean beach of Ashkelon, close to his home. Mir has become accustomed to seeing curiosities either poking out of the sand or washed up by the tide as he runs across the beach, so he keeps his eyes peeled for anything that might be of interest to the area's archaeologists. On that particular June morning, he came across his best find yet. It's a tiny oil lamp like a miniature version of the kind that we associate with the tale of Aladdin and his genie. Experts say that it's likely to be a relic of the 12th century. Ashkelon was an important port in the 12th century, so it's probable that the lamp found its way into the country from abroad. Alternatively, it might have been made in the south of Israel. Goods from the south were often brought to the north by traders so they could be shipped elsewhere. Despite the obvious temptation, Mir decided not to rub the lamp in the hope of seeing a blue genie. Belief in jinn spirits is still common in this part of the world, and Mir is too superstitious to take the risk. We imagine that you've seen hundreds of different maps of the world before, but you've probably never seen one that looks like this. It's a variant of a more famous map produced by Martin Waldseemuller in the 16th century and was found by librarians in Germany's Ludwig Maximilians University, Munich, in July 2012. This was the very first map to use the name America in reference to the land that was better known back then as simply the New World. It was named after an explorer called Amerigo Vespucci, who Waldseemuller mistakenly believed had discovered the continent. Yes, that's right. America is only called America because a German map maker made a mistake. Waldseemuller probably made around 100 copies of this map from woodblocks in his workshop, but only a handful have survived to the present day. Four other copies of this specific map have been found in the past, but for some reason, this one is much larger than the other four, covering an area of 10 square feet when it's fully unfurled. Given the difference in size, it might have been made to order as a special commission. The swastika symbol has a bad reputation today because of who and what it became associated with during the 20th century. If you were to go back in time 8,000 years, you'd find that it was once a symbol of prestige. We can see that here in this nephrite swastika, which was found during excavations of the Slatina Neolithic settlement in Sofia, Bulgaria in 2015. While the swastika shape of the tiny artifact is undeniable, some people find that it reminds them of a frog. Quite why nephrite was chosen as the material to make the object from is unknown. It's a very difficult stone to work with because it's so hard. 
so it would have taken the skills of a master craftsperson to achieve this result from it. Historians think that the frog resemblance might not be coincidental. To the people who lived here all that time ago, frogs were probably an important symbol of fertility. They emerge in spring and then disappear in the fall, only to appear once again the next spring, thus representing the cycle of life. As this tiny swastika was discovered between the ruins of two Neolithic houses, it's possible that it was placed there deliberately as a fertility blessing for the people who lived inside them. The Oseberg is one of the most important, impressive Viking ship burials ever to be discovered. And yet the ship might not have been the most interesting thing in the grave. The burial mound containing the remains of two women, one aged around 70 and one aged around 50, who've never been identified. It also contained this immaculately well-preserved wooden cart. The significance and purpose of the Oseberg cart have long been a topic of conversation between historians with an interest in the Vikings. The first thing to note about it, other than its excellent state of preservation, is that it's older than the ship it was buried with. The ship was built in or around the year 820, whereas the cart was made before the turn of that century. Other carts like this have been found elsewhere in Norway but only ever in graves where women are buried. The cart is covered in carved symbols, some of which represent people and others which represent animals. The majority of the animals are cats. According to Viking mythology, the cart of the fertility goddess Freya was pulled by cats. That might give the cart a religious purpose. A second theory is that the cart was used to transport wealthy women to and from ships so they didn't have to put up with the indignity of walking like common people. We're heading back to Bulgaria now, which is where these five ancient mirror frames were found in interesting circumstances in Pavlikini in early 2018. The frames were found inside the remains of what's thought to be an ancient ceramics factory, which in turn is within the remains of a Roman villa. The villa is thought to have belonged to a veteran of the Roman military, so it's possible that he may also have been gifted a ceramics factory upon completion of his military service in recognition of his achievements. The factory, the villa, and the ornate mirror frames are thought to date back to the late 1st or early 2nd century. The glass that was presumably once inside the frames is long gone but the frames have survived for this long because they're made of lead. In each case, they have identical decorations of large wine vessels with leaved vines emerging from them. This may have had personal significance for the villa's owner. Three of the mirrors have the same inscription which reads as good luck, whereas the other two bear a message that's closer to good soul. Perhaps the mirrors were also retirement gifts to the military veteran from grateful colleagues. The ability to make fire was hugely important to the people of 9 or 10,000 years ago. But those people obviously lacked the fire-making tools we'd use to achieve such a task today. Instead, they used objects like this stone fire-making slab. It was found in Ramat B. Shemesh Israel in 2017, and it's thought to be a whole 9,000 years old. While the ancient occupants of this region had already been making fire for some 800,000 years before this stone was made, it represents a leap forward in technology. The limestone slab has two hollow depressions in it, separated by thick grooves in the surface. Historians believe that wooden branches were placed into the hollows and then rotated rapidly, starting fires more quickly and easily than any other method available to the people of the time. While we tend to view fire making as one of the most important steps forward for the human race in all of history, there's increasing evidence that our ancestors didn't really start thinking of fire as a big deal until around 10,000 years ago. If they had, Artifacts like this would have been invented far earlier. Imagine pulling your fishing net out of a river and seeing this horrifying face staring back at you. 
You can be forgiven for dropping the net and running away in terror. Fortunately, Siberian fisherman Nikolay Tarasov doesn't spook easily. He found the figurine while he was out fishing in his village of Tissel, Russia in 2014. He was hoping to catch crab, but instead he got a pagan god figurine that's thought to be around 4,000 years old. This furious-looking figure is roughly one foot tall and is made of a kind of animal horn that's partially fossilized. Nikolay took his find to a local museum and confessed that he'd had to sit down for a while when the museum's experts told him he'd found a Bronze Age relic. Prior to the arrival of Christianity, the ancient Slavic residents of this area practiced a number of different forms of paganism. This particular deity is thought to belong to either the Samus or Okinev cultures. They were neighboring societies and appear to have shared a few ideas about gods, culture, and representative art. Nikolay gave the statue to the museum immediately without seeking any form of compensation. In his eyes, it's a treasure for the Russian people. Subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications and you will be the first to know when a new video comes out. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.